Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for tuning in today. The Parent University team is pleased to bring you two members of LBUSD's Family Resource Centers, Ms. Teresa Mora, a school counselor, and Mr. Tom Sopp, a school psychologist. They are here today to help us answer some difficult questions that we know parents, guardians, and caregivers everywhere have, such as, how can I keep my student motivated in online learning? How can I be a parent and a teacher? How can I best support my students' distant learning experiences? I think we've all been kind of struggling with these and we're so pleased to bring these experts to the workshop today. Please use the comment feature during today's workshop. If you have any questions for our presenters, we have members of the Parent University team that are monitoring this and we will be able to feed your questions to our presenters. So Ms. Teresa Mora, I'm gonna hand it off to you. Hello, welcome everybody. Actually, I'm gonna start with Mr. Tom Sop. He's gonna be starting our presentation. Um, but my name is Teresa Mora and like Ms. Hodge mentioned, I am a school counselor with the Family Resource Center. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Sop. Hello everyone, it's great uh, to be a part of this presentation. I'm so glad that you've joined us. Again, my name is Tom Sop. I'm a school psychologist with the Long Beach Unified School District and I'm part of the Family Resource Center um, East region. So Teresa and I are, are colleagues and, and work together uh, in the East area schools. Let me tell you a little bit about the Family Resource Centers. So there's four centers and like I said, we're the East region. Uh, all four centers cover about 27 schools within Long Beach Unified School District. If you're interested to know whether your student school is covered uh, under the Family Resource Center, you can go on the district's website and find the alpha index at the top, uh, find F for Family Resource Center, click on that, and then find the Family Resource Center, click again, and then you'll, you can scroll down and, and find more information about the Family Resource Center. Let me tell you a little bit about what the Family Resource Center does. Uh, first of all, we, we work with students. We provide individual and group counseling to students. The referrals we receive are for students who are experiencing anxiety, depression, uh, disruptive behavior, um, and maybe behaviors related to trauma. And the way those referrals come to us is that if you, again, go on the uh, uh, Family Resource Center website, and you scroll all the way down to, to the bottom, you'll see that there's a place for uh, parents, teachers, and students to make referrals to us. Um, and so that's about the family. Re oh, the other thing I should make mention is that we, we support parents as well. Now, for example, we um, connect parents to community resource centers. During this pandemic, that's, that's been pretty important. I know a lot of parents aren't working as perhaps as many hours as they were uh, like before the pandemic. And so um, a resource we frequently provide parents is um, uh, food pantries. And so that's an example of different resources that we provide parents. And so that's a little bit about the Family Resource Center and about us. Uh, let's go ahead and start our presentation. It's really important to us that we're able to field your questions and for you to make comments and there'll be a number of times during this presentation that you'll be able to make comments. Uh, if you have a question, I want you to use the chat box and you see this, the blue symbol there, which represents the chat box. When you see that on a slide, it means we're gonna ask you to participate by using the chat box. When you see this question um, icon that's on your slide, that means we're actually stopping the content of the presentation to address questions right then and there. And so if you have a question during the presentation, feel free to, to type that in the chat box. And then we, when you see this symbol, that means we're gonna stop and answer those questions, which we're looking forward to. And so let's kind of start with some uh, practice here. Find the chat box on your screen. And what I'd like you to do is go ahead and type your name. Now you can type just your first name, that's fine. But along with that, I want you to type your name and your favorite dessert. And so uh, we'll have uh, Kelly go and read some of those as, as people uh, type in. So go ahead and, and this is our practice time to find the chat box and to use it and make sure that's working for everybody. And so go ahead and do that right now.
We've got banana cream pie. That does sound good, actually. There is a little bit of delay between our Zoom and YouTube response. Anything chocolate, chocolate cake. Yes, chocolate cake. <laughs> Ice cream. A banana split. Lemon meringue pie, sugar cookies. I think they know how to use the chat feature, Mr. Sop. <laughs> great, great. It sounds good. I'm a little, yeah. dis little disappointed nobody said coconut cream pie, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> that, that'd be my personal favorite. So, but we'll go ahead and move on. Won't hold that against anybody. And so our topic today is, uh, is addressing home strategies for distance learning. And, and really the subtitle for this is how can I support my students' home learning experience? You know, this is a really a, a crazy time and, and none of us have experienced this. We're, as people have said um, before, you know, we're really all in this together. Boy, isn't that the truth? And, and I know parents are, are stretched thin, uh, working from home and at the same time monitoring their students' learning. Uh, and, and there's a lot of challenge that comes with that. And, you know, teachers, they're learning how to, how to teach again uh, just on a digital platform. Everybody's just doing the best they can to support students, to keep them learning and um, uh, help them progress in their education. And so if, if you felt any frustration with the home learning um, thing, well, just join the club. I mean, we all have at one point or another. I hope that through this presentation, we can maybe ease some of that frustration by giving some strategies uh, and answering some questions. In fact, these are the questions that we intend to answer in today's presentation. Uh, the first one, can I be a parent and teacher? What can I do if my students having difficulty participating in online learning due to distractions? How do I keep my student motivated? Is it okay for me to have some me time? I think that is that last one is, is ex exceptionally salient. So let's start first with this one. Can I be both parent and teacher? And so you see on the bottom there, there there's two points we're gonna make here. The first one is that parents uh, as the child's first teacher and then the goal of parenting. And so let me just go ahead and start off by saying, you know, parenthood can be extremely rewarding, uh, enlightening and enjoyable. It can also be demanding, frustrating and exhausting. Parents have a critical role in rearing the next generation. Parents are a child's very first teacher. It is up to us as parents to decide what values, skills, uh, we would like to, our children uh, to have and, and how we're gonna teach those skills to them. Over the years, a child will have many teachers, but it's a, a child's first teacher and constant teacher is the parent. And so many, um, well, parents as, as a child's first teacher, um, you know, have goals. And there's many different types of goals a parent could have for their student. And so on the screen, you see a sample of goals that parents might have for their student, like you know how to communicate and get along with others, how to manage their feelings, how to be independent and responsible, how to solve problems. These are all really important skills for parents to teach their students. As you can see at the bottom of the slide here, there's a chat box symbol. And this is what I'd like you to um, uh, type into the chat box. Think about your student. What do you want to teach your student in order for your student to be successful in life? Go ahead and type that now. I wish we had some Jeopardy music to play uh, while you're typing to fill in the, the, the silence, but it's okay because I know you're concentrating on, on uh, typing right now.
We have a mother that typed focus. We have patience, persistence, confidence, how to manage their feelings, responsibility, motivation, work ethic, good morals, discipline, to be confident and focus, attention to detail, resilience, how to work collaboratively with others. Mental discipline, definitely see a trend. Wow, uh, and, and those are all great goals. And, and I would say all, all of those are rather significant and important lessons for uh, parents to teach their students. Thank you so much for sharing. I, I really appreciate uh, your comments there. So when you think about, um, as a parent, you have many tools that are at your disposal to teach your student those important lessons. Setting a good example is one tool that you can use. We all learn through watching others. To encourage new behaviors, let your child watch you. Describe what you're doing and let your child copy your actions. Provide help if necessary and encourage your child to try again without any help. And of course, praise your child uh, when they're successful. You know, do not expect your child to follow, let's say, the, the house rules if no one else in the family does. For example, if the house rule is get up, get dressed, and eat before school starts, if you're not dressed and ready for the day, your students can have a hard time following that rule because they don't see an example set before them. So I would encourage you to use the tool of setting a good example to show your child how to behave, especially in those values that you want to teach. And so here's, here's the next question for you to type, uh, to answer by typing into the chat box. What, um, what will you do to set a positive example for your student in those areas that are really important for you to teach your child? You know, the ones that you just kind of put into the chat box. So go ahead and type your answer now. We have setting a positive example of leading by example, working hard to be patient, by remaining calm. I'm in school right now also, so I try to show them that I take school seriously and in focus. I set priorities. I do my work, finishing work, chores and errands before play or screen time, being kind to my neighbors, managing my emotions as a model, keep working on difficult tasks to completion. Well, those are all great answers. Yeah. I really appreciate the fact that, I mean, already you, you, as, as parents, you, you've thought about this and, and you take this seriously. And so that's very encouraging for me personally. I, I love some of the answers there and, and uh, um, I admire them. Uh, obviously you set very high standards and, and you have goals for yourself and um, you know, lessons for you to teach your child. And so I, 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 that's just super. So here's an, an um, now we're going to stop and pause here because we've been talking about you know parents um, as teachers as a child's first teacher and so you see the question mark symbol here. This is a time for you if you have any questions about parents as teachers to go ahead and type them in here.
Mr. Saab, at this time, we're not getting any questions, but we'll check back in, at your next uh, break. Great. Okay. Well, if questions come to mind, feel free to go ahead and put those in the chat box. Let's move on to talk about home learning. And so here's another opportunity for you to type in the chat box. So I want you to look at the cartoon that you see on this slide. What is the message that this cartoon is telling? Type that in the chat box right now. So looking at the cartoon, you see that there's a child in the first uh, picture. It looks like he's at school and he's sitting very patiently. And then in the third picture, he hears the bell. And in the fourth picture, he um, is kind of like, you know, um, he, he pulls on, on the uh, string and then the, the school background goes up and you see his bedroom and his nightstand in the background. Mr. Sop, we also, we had some people who typed in, making the environment reflective of function, uh, school time is over, looks like the home learning and then online class is over. Yeah. The students are missed being at school. So yeah, they were doing some interpretation. Okay, great. Well, and you know, um, first of all, I couldn't help but smile at this because I talked with so many parents about, you know, what's, it, what's home learning been like for them? And, and what um, this cartoon speaks to me is that there's no difference between home and school location, right? The student's at home, he's in school, and then when school's over, well, he's still at home. You know, there's no transition, it's the same environment. And you know, there's advantages and disadvantages to having school at home. And I, you know, um, so can a, can a parent be both parent and teacher? Well, I would say yes. The parents, like I said, are a child's first teacher, but you know, it's the teacher at school who provide the instruction uh, on the curriculum. And you, as a parent, you're gonna be the one who's gonna want to monitor your student's progress at school and support the learning because the environment now is at home. That has become the classroom. And we're gonna talk more about that. So, We'll, we'll go to the next slide here. And so here's a question that we have here is, uh, what can I do if my student is having difficulty participating in online learning due to distractions? So let's take this question on. In fact, kind of judging by uh, your goals for your student, I heard uh, a number of uh, people saying something about focus. So I wonder if some people um, have children that are having a hard time focusing. So here's, um, we're gonna talk about how to set up a learning space at home. And there's two questions here we're gonna answer. Is there a designated learning space at home and does that space have supplies the, students, the student needs? So what does a helpful learning space look like? All right, now here's an opportunity for you again to enter the chat box. I want you to look at the slide. There's a picture on the slide on the left-hand side, you'll see a student who is in class using their Chromebook and you see the, the learning environment that they're in. I want you to look at that picture and answer in the text, in the chat box, what makes this not the best learning space for the student? Go ahead and type that in now.
Mr. Stop, we'll go ahead and give people time to type in their responses. Great. The bed and the mess, it's messy. Too many distractions and promotes laziness. Too many distractions. It's easy for the student to become sleepy, distracted. <laughs> he has no wall behind him. He can easily fall asleep. It's cluttered. He's in his bed. Well, I, I think you guys got the picture, right? Mm -hmm. There's a number of reasons why this isn't the best learning environment for the student. You know, it's distracting. He can fall asleep. He's still in his night clothes. And so let's go to the next picture now. Now here's another picture. This student is in class at home. Tell me why in the chat box, this isn't the best learning space for the student. We have student looks like he could easily fall asleep, too comfortable. Again, they're lounging, too comfortable, laying down. Yeah, it would be really hard, uh, I think, for the student to stay focused. Um, you know, the, the brain's not really engaged. The body is, is, is too restful, right? It's really going to fall asleep. Not to mention, looking at his neck, I can't help but think he's going to have a sore neck by the end of the day. So there's one more picture here. This one's different. What makes this not the best learning environment for the student? So this is a picture of a student, an elementary school student um, sitting on the floor in the living room, has her Chromebook out. Someone's right, that's how I watch TV. Yeah, maybe the, maybe the TV is right in front of her and maybe it's even on. In fact, it looks like she's kind of distracted from the Chromebook, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, how long do you think she's gonna be able to sit that way? I mean, you know, students, um, elementary students, you know, they start school at eight o'clock and they, what, go to, to noon to lunchtime? Or I think for some schools, maybe lunchtime's at 11. If they're spending three or four hours on the floor like this, imagine the fatigue that's gonna set into their muscles. And so the, t the student's gonna tire out, right? And then it's gonna be hard for them to focus because now they're tired. I'm not saying that it's uh, never okay for a student to sit on the floor like this. In fact, there might be times that the teacher instructs them to, to do this. But now let's, let's just talk about well, what would be the, like a better learning space, a better learning environment for the student to really kind of promote their learning and stay focused. So here's another picture. You see a student sitting, um, you, can't, you, you see the back of the student so that you, you can't see the computer in front of them. But now in the, in the chat box, state why you think this is a better learning space for the student. especially compared to the, the pictures that I showed you. And Mr. Stop, we'll still give them time to respond due to the delay. Great. We still have some responses rolling in from the previous question. So. so we have alert and organized, organized and void of distractions, less distractions, better able to focus. It's like being in the school. 
Supplies are easily accessible. Good posture. Great. Yeah, you, you cut on. You can see that the student's in a comfortable chair. Uh, I appreciate the person, whoever said, you know, the person's, the student's organized. You see their textbooks right there. There's also really good lighting for the student. You have a table where the student can take notes. A student lying in the bed, lying on the couch, or sitting on the floor, they can't take notes that way, or it would be really difficult, and they're tired out really quickly. You, you guys are great. You guys, you know, caught on to this really fast. Let's talk more about what we need to do as parents. And that is the first thing is just designate a learning space. Make it like school if possible. I know it's not possible in, in every uh, home situation. And so you know, we're talking about reducing distractions. So we want to make it simple. I have a picture uh, on the slide here. You can see it's just kind of a simple space and it's um, meant to be comfortable for the student. You can see that the uh, table is the student size. It's not too tall, not too short. There's a nice chair to go with it. And it's organized and well lit. You can see some, some books there. And, and what I like is that the student made it kind of personal. You know, they have like their little um, vase with some flowers that the student likes. And what's really cool too, is you see like a little bulletin board where the student can pin up things that are important reminders when, when it comes to school. You know, the other question too is, does the space have the supplies the student needs? And so you can see, you know, there's four categories of needs that the student uh, has. Like the first one is, do they have a laptop or Chromebook? If your student doesn't have a Chromebook or, or a laptop, you know, there, there's one available from the school district. You need to let the school know. Uh, also, you know, there's workbooks and textbooks. Uh, if your student doesn't have what they need, you know, again, the school provides those. What a parent can provide that, that may be helpful is, you know, paper, pencil, eraser, and a notebook. Then that some teachers, you know, have other items that they require their students or they recommend their students have. And so you want to kind of check in with the teacher to make sure your student has everything. Now, here's an interesting question. Um, how does my student stay organized when the designated learning space is the family dining room table? I know that for a lot of parents, um, you know, their space is kind of small. And so all the students kind of meet around the dining room table. I was talking with a parent just last week where there's five students you know, in their smaller space. And, and so they, they, there's only one place for them to, to learn and that's at the dining room table. And so if, if that is your option, you know, how do you keep everybody organized? Because you can imagine five students around the table getting all their books out, their Chromebook, pencils. I mean, how do you keep it all organized? Because they also need to eat at that same space. And so, you know, the students are coming and going from that space. How do you keep to keep things organized. So in the text box, I would love to hear your ideas. I love to hear what you do to keep your student organized uh, in a setting such as this. And we're just giving people time to respond. <laughs> uh, we have a parent says her daughter has a bin that she keeps her school books in and totes them to and from each day. provide headphones, use backpack as usual to organize bigger objects and smaller objects in smaller containers, organizing documents in a binder. Each child has their own crate where they put all their books and supply boxes. Supply boxes. It's set up near their work area, the dining table and bedroom. 
those are all great answers. You know, the, um, you know if, if the way you organize the student or if the student organizes themselves and it works for them, boy, that, that is the answer. I, I really appreciate the answer for, for the parent who said, you know, just like school, you know, my student has a backpack. And so they organize all their stuff in the backpack. I, th I think it's kind of helpful to keep things as close to school as possible. If that works for you, great. I, I also really uh, appreciate the uh, uh, parents answers who said, I have a bin that my student puts all their stuff in. That's really cool too. Here's another question. What are your students distracted by at home during school time? So let's say that it's, it's time for class and they're joining um, you know, online, they have their Chromebook or their laptop, they're in school by their laptop, what tends to distract them in that space? I'd love to hear your answers to this question. So we have YouTube, noise, gets distracted by a sibling who is a toddler, sibling. YouTube. The ability to go on YouTube, siblings on a break, other people that are unmuted. They're distracted by my working at home as well as their sibling, toys, pets, Google games, chat, social media. Wow, I, I so appreciate your, your answers here. It, um, obviously there's a lot of challenges and, and distractions for students. So, you know, what can we redo? So you, you've mentioned the distractions now I'd love to hear what you do to kind of help manage that, to kind of reduce the distractions as best as you can, you know, at home during class time. What do you do to kind of manage some of that? I'd love to hear your answers. And I can't help but think there's other parents in the audience who love to hear your answers too. Laptop monitoring software and consequences was one answers we've received. I check on them. I turn off the TV, I don't use my cell phone. Time management reminders. It's just the three of us. So my husband and I try our best to be quiet on the, in the morning while the school day is getting started. No cell phone in the room. Face him towards less distracting area. And one parent even wrote, that's why I'm here for ideas. I think this is the most diff difficult aspect of remote learning is that distraction piece. I turn off my TV in the next room and I put my cell on silent. I review their daily assignments and give work to them if they finish early. Boy, perfect. I really appreciate your answers. And I'm sure that parents listening uh, appreciate your answers as well. Let me just kind of summarize a few things. Um, you know, the first one is, is the importance about putting toys um, away. 
You know, if, if toys are within reach, uh, you know, are not put away, then, you know, that would be a distraction. I've heard many of you say that, or someone say toys. The other is, is I hear from parents uh, and from teachers that video games are a distraction. And so, you know, if, if the student's in class and their um, remote um, or handheld device is within, you know, reaching distance, so well, that's going to be a distraction because that's calling out to them, believe me. They hear that, that voice of, you know, hey, I need to play some, I need some game time here. Um, so be, it's really good to, to make sure that's turned off and uh, out, out of reach, maybe even out of sight if, if it, the call is just too strong. And I already a number of you mentioned how important it is that all other electronics are turned off. And I just want to point out that, you know, sometimes there are older children um, whose school schedule is different or other adults in the, in the house. Uh, that means that they can't be playing, you know, video games either, right? Because that's been distracting because you have the sound and you can hear the click, click, click. And, and you know, the student's going to be thinking, oh man, I wish I was playing video games. And I heard somebody say earlier um, that it's been helpful to use headphones. And so if you have multiple students at home, it's really nice to have the headphones. In fact, when I talk with teachers, teachers will report that they can hear their fellow teachers teaching because you know, everybody's kind of blasting their sound. And so headphones can really help reduce distraction, reduce noise for students. And so how, how to increase focus? And so I'm, um, because you know, I, I'm looking at time and, and we're, I'm gonna go ahead and skip this question, um, but I do wanna address, well, how can we, we've talked about reducing distraction, what can we do to increase focus? And so we can post the class schedule, you know, and we can make it, you know, the, the student can make it colorful. We can set timers. I heard one parent say that they monitor and give uh, prompts or reminders. Um, we can incorporate school spirit days kind of into the, the student's schedule and post that, you know, so the student knows like the next day is crazy sock day or crazy hat day, uh, you know, or, or, or vacation time or whatever. And so posting a class schedule is, is one way to keep, you know, students focused. The other is, you know, um, when students have break times, it's really important that they have a change in scenery and, and, and use the break, you know? So if a student has a break, that's a really good time for them to get up, you know, change location, kind of like changing classes, you know, especially for secondary students who have multiple classes, if, if they can kind of move around and, and maybe even change location, if, if there's another location from the go-to that's also um, less distracting, you know, then that might be helpful. Encourage them to play during recess time and lunch break to have some downtime, take their mind off of school. Some, some fun, simple things you can do at home. Students can blow bubbles, um, have a race you know, outside, play red light, green light, play with the ball, check the weather, something real simple, go outside and give a, come back in, give a weather report, uh, play with a balloon just by bouncing it, keeping it up in the air. Uh, play trash can basketball, uh, play Legos, puzzle. I mean, you, I'm sure you can come up with a ton of ideas as well. But getting those brain breaks for your student might really be a time for them to kind of re-energize, to help them now increase their focus for the next, next learning segment. The other is, is having a visual to indicate school time. For example, if you're using the dining room table uh, and now it's the school time, It'd be nice to have like a, a special dining room tablecloth. Uh, it could be paper, it could be plastic, uh, maybe in something that they can draw on that, that becomes kind of the symbol of, okay, this is class time. This is the class day beginning. And now I'm in class. Or if not a tablecloth, maybe just a placemat or banner or draw a picture of the school or the classroom. Um, and so now I, I think it's time to pass it on to my uh, colleague, Teresa, who's going to begin uh, presenting and answering on this question. Thank you, Tom. Um, I guess, like, again, again, my name is Teresa Moore. I'm a school counselor, and I know we already received a lot of great information. Um, so what we're going to go over right now is we came up with this acronym just to kind of 
encourage us and to remind us, you know, to to motivate our students and how can we can do how we can do that. Um, so the next slide. Oh, nope. sorry. <laughs> So what we're going to go over and cover is home expectations. How do we establish a routine as if we're going to school or the actual campus? Um, S stands for schedule, T stands for technology, and A stands for accountability. And the last one is routine. So for S schedule, is it's so important that we as parents, we know our students' class schedule. We know the classes, we know um, what their assignments are or what they're going to be working on on that day. Um, so we can, you know, we, we know when they're going to have a break or a holiday that's coming up or there's vacation time. So we know what's going to be, what's happening, just if they were going to school. It's important that um, you post the class, the student schedule and the day of the week, because, you know, just like many of us right now, it's. It's hard to know what is it today? Is it Thursday, Friday? Because it it all it all kind of just combines, right? So it's important that you post a student schedule that they can visually see what is that they're working on, right? Um, make sure your child understands that school that school time that is school time and um, what they're expected. What 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 do they need to complete? What tasks do they need to complete for that day? Technology, um, you know, that uh, right now, right? It's all about technology. Ensure that they are logging in early to make sure that it's all working, you know, the internet's up and running, um, the hotspot's working. Use ask, say, do. So um, what, what ask is, is that you ask your child, what is the first step? You know, turning on the computer, you let them explain to you, oh, we turn on the computer or we go to Canvas. Um, Say, so if your child does not give the correct answer, calmly tell them what to do. It's time to turn on the computer. Do, if your child does not log in, help them. Put your hands over the child's hand and guide them through the task. Uh, not, another important thing to remember is that just because um, our kids were raised on technology and my, my love complex video games, that doesn't automatically translate to successful online learning experience. Um, not all students have access to devices at home, and schools may require to provide those students with devices to take home. So if you're having issues with technology, um, you're having problems logging in, um, we provided some websites here, some links where you can click on them, and they will help you with either, you know, how to log in, you know, notify the school immediately if your child is having trouble logging into the class, technical support um, for home learning, uh, the district has provided some information on, th on that as well. If you're having an issue with like a hotspot, uh, contact your school directly. And there's also some low cost Wi-Fi that you can uh, access. So all that is all in our district website and we provided the links here so you can um, access them later. Um, the next thing is that we remember that um, when the camera's on, people can see you if you are in view. Uh, when the microphone's on, people can hear everything that's happening in the background, even if they have the headphones, right? Maybe they're blocking out the noise, but just know that people can still hear what's happening. Um, so what is in the background? If there's something that you don't want people to see, make sure, you know, maybe consider using a virtual background, um, provide students with headphones and when your child is at school or via the Chromebook, you know, it's, so it's important that you're aware of your surrounding and what they're surrounded by. Accountability. So only because we're doing online learning, it doesn't mean, you know, that attendance is not important, right? Attendance is important all the time. Is make sure you check on your child's attendance regularly. regularly. Um, we, we provided some, some links here. So for primary, you know, use parent view, secondary, the school loop, and you can access to see if they're logging in. You know, if you're, if you have to work, you have that information and you can log in and check, hey, have they logged in today? Have they missed class? Um, make sure that you're, you're keeping them accountable and always be aware of the school calendar and plan family trips during school holidays and or winter and summer breaks. 
Um, schedule your school, your child's medical and dental appointments after school or during school breaks. Um, so they won't be missing any uh, classes or important, you know, assignments. So we, it's important that we set that, it, like previously mentioned, is we're a good example. We have to teach them that it's important that they log in to all their classrooms or log in, you know, for the whole day. And routine, so that's the R. It's so important that you establish a morning routine and encourage your child to get dressed into school clothes and to eat breakfast before class begins. Establish a routine for bedtime. And so I know this is, you know, hard, but it's so important that we're very, that we're consistent on a daily, right? Uh, it might be difficult at times, but it's the, the, the more consistent you are, the easier it gets because it will become, it will become second nature to them. So it's so important that you establish, you know, the, the morning and bedtime routine because it's just like if they're going to school, right? Um, if they're going to be in a virtual class and virtual classroom time, make sure that your child is there on time. Uh, arriving late is Im immensely distracting to the entire class, right? If they're eating in front of the, um, during class time, then they might be a distraction to their to their classmates. Also, if you are scheduled to have a meeting with your child's teacher, make sure you're on time to that too. And like, it's just being part of like, you're establishing an example and that you're there. Um, so it's important that routine is incorporated in your daily, uh, in your daily life or daily routine. Sorry, my screen went blank. So Teresa, do you, yes. can, you, can you continue then? I don't see the presentation. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> Would you like me to continue then or? Yes, oh, well, if you, well, if you don't mind sharing, sorry. Oh, we apologize. That... Mm -hmm. This might take a minute. Mm -hmm. Stretch break, everybody, stretch. Sorry, now, now I'm having difficulty. Uh, give me one sec. <laughs> well, see, there you go. We can always count on technology to fail. You know, it, it's never really a true webinar if uh, something doesn't fail, <laughs> right? Yes. There we go. You got it? Okay. Think, oh, oh did you, not, did I you lose it? it? Yeah. Well, you know, and that's not me then. That's not on okay. my end. Do you see? Can we see this? Tom, do you see that? I do. Well, I see the uh, slide. Yes. So okay. would, it be, would it be best for me to continue then? Or what do you think? OK, so I, I can see it now. Oh, great. OK, awesome. Thank you for the uh, for bearing with us during this technology days, right? <laughs> so now we know we we understand our students a little more, right? How sometimes it can, it doesn't always work our way, but um, a sample routine. So this is kind of an example of what you can do. Um, you know, a routine you could set up. We're not saying you have to do this, right? This is just an example, a sample routine. So at 7 a.m., you know, wake up, you know, get them all dressed, you know, move on to breakfast. And, you know, school, this is, you know, we're just doing it for elementary. This is an example for elementary students from 8 a.m. to full, to 2.05, around 2.05, they're at school time. So that's their, you know, that's a designated time for that. Ensure that, you know, after school time, they get a little break. And like mentioned, you know, before, they go stretch, move, get their blood flowing, you know, because we've sit for a long time now. Um, make sure they get a snack. 3.30, you know, if they have homework, ensure that there's, you know, time for that. 
you know, five o'clock free time and family time, six o'clock some dinner, and, you know, seven o'clock have, make sure that you get them in the shower and then end the, the end of day routine at eight o'clock, you know, no more electronics, take, you know, turn the phones off and just get them ready for bedtime, just depending on their age, right? And so it's important that they get enough sleep so they'll be ready to go the next day. Um, any questions about STAR? I know there were some distractions. Um, there were some interruptions in between that, but is there any questions? You can use the comment section on your, um, and ask any questions that you might have regarding this. Teresa, we do have one question, kind of in general, how can a parent manage without hovering? That is a very good question. Um, well, it's, I mean, I can't, you know, <laughs> there's many answers to that question, right? So how mm -hmm. can we not hover is ensuring that, you know, just like checking off the schedule, for example, hey, check off every time you complete a task. Check, out, check it off on the schedule. And I'm gonna check it at noontime during when your first break, I'm gonna ensure that you completed those classes or the, those assignments. Um, maybe turning in your phone at the end of the day or during break time, just you, you can review things to ensure that they're logging in um, beforehand without you know being so over every hour, hey, let me see your phone, let me see your phone. Um, Obviously, we're trying to teach them responsibility as well. So giving them the opportunity to become responsible, right? And ensuring that it, it's not always going to be, you know, they're not going to always do exactly what we ask them to, but giving them the opportunity to, to, to create, to become responsible. Tom, is there something you want to add to that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, especially for parents with secondary students, what they can do is that they can log on the school loop. If you don't know how to log in the school loop, you can call your school and, and ask to set up an account. But on school loop, you'll see what uh, assignments they've been given for each class. And what you can see is whether it's completed or not. So there's different ways of monitoring. You know, you can monitor up close by observation, observation up close, observation far away, and then observation through technology, because you can look to see whether the assignment is uh, has been completed and turned in. And so I think what you would want to do as a parent is create different ways in which you can monitor, not just one way, because you're right, you can't just be right on them the whole time. So think of you know, what are multiple ways that I can, you know, monitor the situation. And so I would encourage you to be creative in that way. And I think School Loop is a great resource for that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, and now I know this is a question of the hour, right? Okay, I'm being a parent, I'm being a teacher. Is it okay for me to have some me time? And the answer is yes. It's so important that we make time for ourselves to recharge ourselves and take care of our needs as well. So um, many of you have seen this, this uh, visual or you've heard the, the saying is that you can't pour from an empty cup, right? You gotta take care of yourself first. And there, when you fly, when you travel, so when they say, you know, in case of an emergency, if something were to occur, what is the first thing they, they tell you to do is like when the, those face masks come down, right? The mask for the oxygen, they tell you, you gotta put it on yourself first before you put it on anybody else, right? You can help anybody else. It's just the same thing here. You need to ensure that you are fulfilling your needs as well and pouring in your cup so you can be able to provide and be present for your for your for your children. So what can uh, what do you do to care? So because of timing, um, we're going to continue on. So what do you do to take care of yourself? So as a family resource center, what we started doing, uh, we created since last year. Uh, we have a wonderful colleague that puts this together, and it's the self care calendar. So if you want it, you want access to that, you can reach out to. Um, to us directly and we can provide that for you. Uh, and every day it has a different type of uh, self-care reminder or a tip for the day. 
for you to, you know, you can put it, you can do it for yourself or as a family, you can incorporate it as a family and you can do it together. Um, also, we do have an Instagram account that we are putting self-care reminders and, and tips on there as well. So you can follow us there. Um, and just know that there are different types of self-care, right? So it's not always about being physically active or, um, you know, hanging out with, especially right now where we can't really hang out with, you know, with our groups, maybe a group of friends, but there's so different needs as adults we have, you know, we have physical needs, we have emotional needs, um, we have spiritual needs, personal needs, to ensure that you are taking time to cover some of those or all of those if possible, to continue to fill your cup so you won't um, react, right, or or snap, like they say, because you're so overwhelmed. You got to take care of, of yourself to ensure you're there present and your students can see, hey, these are stressful times, but my mom, my dad, they're handling it well, right? And you're, whatever we, we how we react, we, we kind of portray on our students, on our children. So we want to ensure that we teach them that it's okay to, to take time for, to take care of yourself. Tom, you want to add something to that? Well, I, I think you said it. I think it's really great for um, parents to model taking care of themselves so that their student will take care of themselves as well. You know, telling them why I'm taking a break or why I'm exercising, you know, or why I'm reading my favorite book. That's all really important. Mm -hmm. So now we have the, uh, uh, the question icon on the screen. So this is a time for you to uh, type in questions about, you know, questions you might have about self-care. Maybe go ahead and typing in just what you do for self-care or the challenges that you face in getting your own self-care. So go ahead and type that in the box right now. Just giving people some time with our delay. And while people are maybe taking a moment to do that, um, we just want to thank you both for being presenters on our workshop today. I think this was full of really important and impactful information. Well, and I love talking with parents. And while I can't see you, I just so enjoy hearing your responses um, and I appreciate your participation. And your patience too. Mm -hmm. You had a chance to model patience for your student right now. <laughs> so uh, to our viewers uh, who tuned in today, we just wanna say, if you did not have a, a if we didn't have a chance to answer your question, or if you think of something later, you can please email us at parentuniversity at lbschools.net. Again, parentuniversity at lbschools.net, and we can get answers or questions to uh, Teresa and, and Tom to get answers back to you. We also want to remind our viewers that today's presentation will be available to view in Spanish. Kamai in English within a couple of days on Parent University's YouTube channel. Our team at Parent University wishes you a healthy and happy Thanksgiving, and we look forward to connecting with you again after the break. <laughs>